uh, unzip open dj and then I go to the open dj I do a setup uh, by the way uh, I have a example.ld file for this purpose so what this file has is a couple of users one that has a user id b jensen and the other one with a user id is carter and i also have some groups in here uh, one of the groups is employees group and the other group is the contractors group so i guess you can uh, kind of get an idea of where we are headed uh, we would have some users under this group currently there are no users under this group and we will also have some users under the contractors group and then define policies that maps to these groups so that people who belong to the employees group uh, would be governed by the rules that are defined for that particular group. Uh, I'm going to use this file to import data into the directory server when I run through the setup. Uh, you would remember this hardly takes a couple of minutes. So let me just walk you through the installation of OpenDJ here. Um, so yeah, password is password. Password, that's fine, 1389. Um, I would use the default values for all this and here I'm going to import the data from an LDIC file. So let's specify the path which happens to be slash opt uh, slash opt slash example dot LDIC. Uh, example dot LDIC. Okay, so let, let the server start after the configuration is done. So again, uh, to reiterate what I'm trying to do here is I'm loading my OpenDJ instance with a couple of users and two groups. Currently, the groups do not have any users in it. The idea is to bring these subjects, these users and group into my OpenAM instance and then define policies to protect my uh, web server. So last time we did not define policies in the web server. We only used it for authentication. So let this complete. Um, meanwhile, we can go to the OpenAM and configure a new data store. Currently, it is only pointing to the embedded data store. I go to the subjects, I can see three default users in there. So as to avoid any confusion, let's just delete the anonymous user from here. We don't have, we don't need many users. Let's go back to the data store and create a new data store, uh, which is of type OpenDJ. Let's uh, give it some name, my OpenDJ or something and then uh, go to next. So here I'm expected to specify uh, the details about my OpenDJ instance, such as the host where it is located. So that's openidm.mydomain.com and the port number is 1389. I would load schema when finished so that uh, OpenAM is in a position to modify the data in uh, the OpenDJ instance. The uh, bind DN. The user ID that I would like to use for authenticating to the directory server instance, the password of that user, the password of that user confirmation, and then the base DN, which is DC is equal to example, DC is equal to call. We just verify that the instance is up and running. We can actually run an LDAP search command on that localhost minus P1389 CN is equal to directory manager minus W password. Uh, minus b dc is equal to example dc is equal to com object class we might need this command at later stages also so you can see there are some users in here which is expected and now let's go back to open am and say finish so if, if you have configured it correctly the subjects tab is expected to have two users which is barbara jensen and john Doe. not just that the group would have a list of groups in there but if i go to the employees group uh, and look at these users who exist in the employees group. There are no users in the employee group. We will add these users at a later stage. So I'll, I'll pause uh, here for a second or so, and I hope uh, you, have, you have followed what we just did. All I did was uh, connecting my open AM to the open DJ instance that has a set of users as well as a couple of groups. And the idea here is to define policies that affects uh, these groups that exist in the OpenDJ instance. So I'll, I'll pause here for, uh, here for a moment, just in case if any of these steps that I did was confusing, I can actually walk you through that again. And I'll, I'll take the silence as, uh, you know, approval to go ahead. So maybe after a 
few seconds if i don't get any message on the chat window i would take it for okay that's that's uh, uh, helpful karan thank you so that's done now i need to go to the uh, policy tab this is where i would define the policies for my uh, web application the apache web, web application that i'm protecting here uh, bear in mind that when it comes to the policies there are a few things and I'm, I'm 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 going to write an equation on the chat window which hopefully all of you can see uh, i have not sent it across yet uh, subjects uh, resources plus rules plus subjects plus uh, environment conditions plus uh, response attributes uh, this equation is going to be extremely helpful for you if you continue to work on open ai i mean when you define policies this is an equation that is always in my mind there is a resource that we are protecting which in our case is a url there are some rules that defines what kind of access permission you are configuring whether it is allow or deny uh, allow read access allow write access or deny write access and allow read access that's what rules is subjects are the individuals or the group affected by this so who may be applying this policy for so that's exactly what you define by the subject and then there are environment conditions for example uh, uh, would i would let this subject access a specific url provided the subject is coming from so and so ip address or the subject is coming at uh, uh, coming on this website from 9 am to 5 pm so those are the environment conditions that i could actually define and then finally response attributes i could send back some code of an application uh, i mean i could send back pin code of a subject to an application and the app could probably use the pin code to show a weather report of the city where the uh, subject belongs to so th those kind of things can be done while defining the policy so keep this equation in mind uh, when we define a policy here so let me go back to the page again uh, i want to let i i, I want to uh, let you uh, digest this uh, equation which is actually the resource you are protecting what are the rules uh, that are, that that we're going to apply Uh, who is going to be affected by that uh, are there any specific conditions that you want to define like the uh, ip address from where the subject is coming from the time of the day etc and then finally uh, the last one in the list is uh, whether uh, you want to send back some attributes of the user to the subject so let me edit this uh, policy and say i want to add a new policy name of the policy is my web policy and the description is policy for my apache web server a uh, resource type of course is url and then i have to define the pattern what exactly are you trying to uh, protect so again i can use a wild card character indicating that everything this policy is going to be applicable for all the url or otherwise i can say is going to be applicable for http apache.mydomain.com on the port number 8000 and this is going to be applicable for employees slash employees dot html you would remember this is the uh, this is the url that is accessible to the employees within the organization so let me create this so this is the resource for which we are applying the policy this url of course you can use a wild card characters it's certainly not a realistic scenario to write one url after the other uh, more importantly if you have a large number of urls to be protected you would probably use a command line interface to add this policy rather than using a ui because ui is going to be a little difficult in such situations now what exactly is the rule that you want to define i would say i would allow get so i make say uh, i i save changes to that that's the rule the action that is permitted for whom is the next question so that's the subject now what i'll do here is i would say okay the subject is a group and then i can actually search for group here 
I save changes here. So, uh, let me just select that again. Subject is employees. I have to do this tick and say save changes. And then of course I'm not defining any environment condition. The way I have to tell you that I am on an under, uninterrupted power supply now. Uh, so in case if I vanish from the go to meeting, please give me a few minutes to get back. Uh, unlikely, but I'm just uh, giving you a heads up on that. Uh, pause for a moment. Just wanted to check if you understood what I just did. I defined a specific resource, which was a full fledged employee URL. I defined an action that's permitted, which is get uh, on uh, allow, allow on get. And then I am defining subjects that's actually the users who belong to. Yeah, I would remove that. I would I would actually remove that. So let me just remove the never match. So uh, was that understood? Okay. So now yes. uh, next, yeah. Next thing that I'm expected to do is go to the subjects tab and go to the group and then say employees and then go to the user and say I want to add a user which in this case is B Jensen. So I save it. Uh, by the way, uh, the changes would have happened on the LDAP server also. So if I just do an LDAP search here uh, and look at employees, you can see the unique member is B Jensen now. So there is one user added to the employees group of my uh, LDAP server. I'll go back to my URL here. So again, as usual, I would close this. I would close this as well. And then I would open an incognito browser and then try to access employees.html. By the way, it's going to redirect me. Uh, I, I, I would try to log in as uh, John Doe first. Certain expected because John Doe does not have access to the, the source. Let me open a new incognito window and then I say apache.mydomain.com colon a it's redirecting again. I say B Jensen uh, and then password. Remember, uh, B Jensen is a part of it, so I can see the page which actually says employee. Objects being individual users, subjects are groups in the OpenAM who has a list of users in it. I hope that part was pretty clear. <laughs> 